the Reich's Concordat, a covenant that was negotiated between the Vatican and the emergent Nazi Germany, signed July 20th, 1933. It was ratified September 10th, 1933, and it has been in force from that date onward. You read the title to the video correctly. The treaty guarantees the rights of the Roman Catholic Church in Germany. When bishops take office, Article 16 states that they are required to take an oath of loyalty to the governor or president of the German Reich established according to the Constitution. The Reich's Concordat is the most controversial of several concordats that the Vatican negotiated during the pontificate of Pius XI. Most controversial, do you think so? It is frequently discussed in the works that deal with the rise of Hitler in the early 1930s and the Holocaust. The Concordat has been described by some as giving moral legitimacy to the Nazi regime soon after Hitler had acquired quasi-dictatorial powers through the Enabling Act of 1933, an act itself facilitated through the support of the Catholic Center Party. Rome became the first legal partner to Hitler's regime. It says that the majority of the German church hierarchy regarded the treaty as a symbol of peace between church and state. From a Roman Catholic Church perspective, it has been argued that the Concordat prevented even greater evils being unleashed against the church. Because that's what was important to them, right? Covering their own interests. as the most mortifying abominations went on. Though some German bishops were unenthusiastic, well, good for them. And the Allies, at the end of the World War II, felt it inappropriate. Pope Pius XII successfully argued to keep the Concordat in force. It is still in force today. Don't forget that fact. It is still in force today. And why would a man of God, which the doctrine of the Catholic Church says, to whom belongs infallibility as he sits in that seat, as the so-called Holy See argued to keep the covenant in force after it had been adhered to and kept throughout Hitler's dictatorship in the war and all of the abominations and atrocities. And it says again, Article 16 states that Bishops, when they take office, are required to take an oath according to the Concordat or this covenant. Well, let's look at Article 16. Before taking possession of their diocese, the bishops shall take an oath of loyalty either between the hands of the Reichstestalter, which means the governor or those of the president of the Reich at the time, the formula of which shall be the following. Before God and on the Holy Gospel, this is a quote, Article 16, I swear and promise, as becomes a bishop, loyalty to the German Reich. I swear and promise to respect the governor the, I swear and promise to respect the government established according to the Constitution and to cause the clergy of my diocese 
to respect it. And the due solicitude for the welfare and its interests of the German Reich, I will endeavor while performing the spiritual office bestowed upon me to prevent anything which might threaten to be detrimental to it. They swear, and they continued to swear throughout the dictatorship of Adolf Hitler as millions of humans, men, women, and children were packed into boxcars, delivered to be tortured and murdered. They stood heel and heel with the devils in uniforms, swearing, Heil Hitler. This is the Catholic Church. Now, did you remember to keep in mind what I said when I first read that? It is still in force today. Still in force today. This covenant. Still in force today. Never repented of. Never repudiated. In fact, the successor to Pope Pius XI on to the 12th argued to keep it in force after this filthy, wicked, child of hell, Adolf Hitler, murdered millions of people through his insane, satanic, war machine, starving, torturing, murdering, and incinerating men, women, and children like trash. And this is the Holy Church here. Here's the Catholic Cardinal at Hitler War Rally, 1935. Here's the Archbishop who threw an annual birthday party, who was at the annual birthday party celebration. Do you want to know how to spot a false prophet, a false teacher, false brethren, lying tongues? Just see if they're standing in the place Hitler stood with their friends, the archbishops, the popes, the diocese, the Vatican. Not that we need further proof, but this will be installed as further proof that Rome and the Catholic Church are in fact the mystery Babylon described in Revelation in detail, particularly chapter 17 and 18, the book of Revelation. The Whore of Babylon, Mystery Babylon the Great, Mother of Abominations of the Earth, who reigns over the kings of the earth. So what this means today, how this helps us discern good from evil today, you want to know if somebody is of God or if they are a deceiver and a liar? Just see, are they in partnership with the Catholic Church? Again, this covenant, this covenant is still in force today. Still in force today. Never repudiated, never nullified, never repented of. The Nazi regime, the Reich's Concordat, and the Vatican, the Catholic Church. Anyone who stands in support of the Catholic Church is a promoter 
of the great apostasy. That's as simple as that. Billy Graham has been there. All the presidents of the United States have been there. Again, rulers of the kings of the earth, the rulers of the earth commit fornication with the whore of Babylon. Bill Johnson, Todd White, TBN, the Crouch family, uh, Pat Robertson, Kenneth Copeland, the Robisons, I mean all of these popular famous church celebrities and false prophets and teachers. Uh, Chris Tomlin and the whole CCM network. They might as well be standing in this picture. Because it ultimately comes down to one group of Satan worshipers along with another group of Satan worshipers. They're serving the God of this world. They misrepresent the gospel. They pervert the gospel. And this collusion with the Nazi regime is just a gross example of the underlying subterfuge that is used by Mystery Babylon. So again, as I ask you, please share this information. Please like, share, subscribe. I'll leave links down below for more information. Links at the end cards of the video to see the playlist on the Catholic Church. We're commanded by God and His Holy Word to fully expose, reprove the unfruitful works of darkness. This is to warn those or any way in connection to the Babylonian religious system, the Catholic Church, the apostate church at large, whether undercover or out in the open, we must expose it, have no fellowship with it. So until next time, preach the truth, the true unadulterated gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ for His glory. To his name be all praise and glory forever. In Jesus' name, amen.